Yeah, some of you might have seen that. I have, have this movie watcher's guide to enlightenment. And um, there's one of the movies that's in it called Chances Are. And uh, that movie was, Johnny Mathis, of course, made that song very famous. But there's a song, the theme song from that movie is uh, with Peter Cetera and uh, Cher. And uh, there's a great line in that song. Every memory repeats. Every step I take retreats. Every journey always brings me back to you. And it's, it's really a song about coming back to God, about letting go and coming inward and coming inward. And in A Course in Miracles, Jesus teaches us that time doesn't go forward. That actually, as we progress on the spiritual journey, it's like we're retracing our steps. And we're like, going back to the beginning, you know, where in the beginning, in the I amness that's prior to time is where all our joy and innocence are, and we've, we've, so to speak, projected out or went out into time, and now we come back and back and back and back, and we retrace our steps. So, in one sense, it's, it's about time collapsing instead of time extending. It's about uh, miracles saving us time through time collapse instead of having to continually play out these same mistakes and errors over and over like a broken record. So, uh, you know, that's why you're here, that's why we're all here, is to, to be inspired into that, to really know that that is, is our way and that we're on this together. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it works out, it, you know. You, it just you come and you start to feel more and more inspired that you can relax and that things will will work out. I always felt, um, especially when I was in high school and in my twenties, that I would just have these deep sharings with with a friend or with some friends, like heart to heart talks. And it was my most enjoyable experience was having heart to heart talks, and I always thought it would be nice to just have a make do that for a living. Uh, I guess Oprah did, so, uh, you know, it's, and you see how, how helpful, you know, that, that it's something that we wouldn't even consider. And I do remember saying that to Spirit one time, saying, I would love to make a living at that. And the Spirit said, okay, you, you will, you will, you will have your living in that. And so, just to start to open the mind to those kind of things is, is quite a step. Because it's a step from the traditional patterns. One of the, the major teachings of A Course in Miracles <coughs> is that all illness is mental illness. And, you know, when you start working with the Course and you start giving yourself over to it, that's one of those things that seems to be a big, big stretch. And, and the only way that that we can actually come into an experiential understanding and awareness that all illness is mental illness, is coming into a full-blown experience that, that everything is mind. Everything is mind. Or you could say everything is consciousness, if you want to talk about it that way. And with A Course in Miracles, basically the way into that experience is it's through a shift of mind and literally through a progression of, we'll say, experiences that have to do with our identity. So a lot of us, you know, we're born, raised, we have all these ambitions of what we're going to be when we grow up, whether it's a dancer or an architect or, you know, a writer or all these different professions. And, you know, chances are when we were pondering all the potential professions, you know, being a miracle worker was not one of them. And yet, uh, when we read A Course in Miracles, it's like, oh, that, it's like the Spirit saying, oh, that's your chosen profession. You're going to be a miracle worker, regardless of whether you were uh, ha a mother, or you were a part of a dance company, or part of a construction company, or part of a family, or whatever. Whatever the the script seems to be, whatever the story seems to be, that's our starting point. But our end point is, is being a miracle worker. 
And I know for me, you know, it was like there was being raised in Christianity, there was even that miracle worker is just a couple words, but it conjures up things. What am I supposed to, you know, part the Red Sea and, you know, you know, raise the sick and you know, raise the sick, <laughs> raise the sick, raise the dead even. You know, it's like <laughs> it's more than that. It just goes on and on. And there was all these associations there. And then the more I got into the practice, I started to have a lot of phenomenal things that were very out of pattern things happening uh, around mystical experiences I was having and people around me and so forth. And it did start to seem more like a like a fail. It just had l less of a of a concrete reality to it. And you know, I would find myself going, nobody's going to believe this. I can hardly believe it. And then it, it just, but here it's happening, and it's happening again. So it's a convincing job. The spirit has to convince us. And I know for myself, going through what seemed to be physical ailments, and then just practicing the lessons and practicing the principles, that I would have shifts, you know, removal of symptoms and things that were just shifting and changing, and even we could say being reflected back to me very directly from from the world of form and it really got my attention you know i have even said i i was doing the workbook lessons and i was doing this lesson where the it was like a rolodex in my mind one day there is no death the son of god is free i might as well have had James Earl Jones' voice, you know, like from Field of Dreams, you know, that deep voice, there is no death, the Son of God is free. And I literally was guided to take some food, plate of food uh, salad to my grandmother, and I was guided to this restaurant or this actually supermarket that I never, hardly ever went to, and I had a ra raising the dead experience. I watched a, a woman who, had, who was laying in the aisle and had stopped breathing. The paramedics had given up on her and was just like laying there, just like stone cold, no diaphragm movement. And I had all this, I'm working with the Course, you know, you just give yourself so fully over to it. There is no death, the Son of God is free. Talk about a, working on your lesson of the day, that was pretty, it was very strong. It was almost like it was thundering in my mind and then I watched this woman seemingly come back to life and and I just witnessed it. But it seemed very, very natural. Like it was like the form and the script was just matching to this magnitude that I was experiencing, all this energy like in my mind, my right where my my third eye would be and right around my heart area. And it just kept happening, those kind of things, over and over and over. And what that does is it takes you into an experience that that all sickness is, is sickness of the mind. It's all mental sickness. And really, the only way to really fully get into being a miracle worker is to really start to have the experience that it has been a perceptual problem. You know, perceiving the fragmented world is what the problem is. The problem, the problems really aren't specific. The ego has tricked us into believing the problems are specific. And when you're going through something like, like, like a broken back or all those seeming experiences and the pain, you know, they seem to be very strong witnesses uh, to the reality of the body and the reality of the physical. But the more we go deeper and deeper inside and we give ourselves over to the Course and these teachings, it's just you, you do get happier and happier because you do realize that there's no problem apart from the mind and there's no problem apart from what you think. And you, you really do focus in on watching your, your mind like never before. You become very super attentive to your thoughts. Before, you know, you were distracted in all the forms, but after a while it's like, hmm, no, I'm going to pay close attention to these thoughts as I move through the day. And that's what the Course Workbook lessons were for me. It was just, you know, super attentive. I was highly sensitized. Um, and, and it used to be before I could slip into some annoyance or irritation or what I called mild upset, but then that became more 
excruciating. You know, even even the mildest disturbances were were really powerful. They really got my attention, and I was able to just bring it back again and release the thoughts. And so, I think that's the thing. That's what you're going through with your friend. You know, is it's kind of like in your face, in the sense that it's still a predominant part of your awareness. And then the workbook lessons just give you, it's like a gentle reorientation of the mind every day and di during different aspects of the day to keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. To the point, you know, when you practice it more and more and more, there's, it does seem quite surreal. The world starts to be very, very surreal and, and then you're, you're more just in a state of watching. The body may still seem to be active, you know, but it's the mind is is at rest and is at stillness. So, um, I always found that that I just saw everything as my own lesson, and so it wasn't so much what was happening in my world that I was perceiving, but it was more paying closer and closer attention to my reactions. Uh, even at nighttime, during my nighttime dreams, instead of doing like, you know, dream uh, analysis, it was more paying close attention to what I was feeling, you know, during the dreams and, and also whatever those reactions were. <coughs> and even pondering in the morning when I would wake up and remember, remember a dream like, huh, what was I feeling? You know, really zooming into that and then working with that as a way to release. So. You know, it's you find yourself more and more. Uh, I mean, I just I remember an early Course in Miracles video that I watched where all these people were were at all, all different stages of working in different aspects of society and different different aspects of of professions and living in the world and so forth. But they were all talking about their mental practice of working with the Course. Some of them were like a speech writer for the President of the United States, you know, saying, I realized that, that countries would keep fighting and we would still have conflicts going on in the world until I could bring my own self to peace of mind. I could have a shift in my own mind. You hear it from many, many different people who are working with the Course and it starts to dawn like, okay, that's, that's where my major work is. That's going to be my contribution. So you keep practicing and practicing and then through the practice comes more and more the experience of, of feeling detached. Deep down too, that's what people want to feel. They want to feel that love and that connection. Uh, they just want to know that they're loved. And that experience of, of extending that love says more than anything else that we could do. You know, just that sense of being really fully present with someone. So it feels like that's part of what your lesson is right now, is, is to just go and join with your friend and be the presence of love. Be there as, as a listener. Uh, be there in, in total acceptance. And uh, through that demonstration, you're showing uh, the w that there is another way. And it's very powerful. That's no small thing at all. <laughs>